Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, I nodded, nearly napping. Suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Just some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember. It is in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost on the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my books a cease of sorrow. Sorrow for the lost Lenore. O oh, Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, name us here for evermore. The silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating. Tis a visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, this it is and nothing more. Tis a visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, this it is and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door, darkness there and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping, something louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice, let me see then what there it is, and this mystery explore. Open here I flung a shutter, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mine of lord or lady. Perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace, just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly, grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me, tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's plutonian shore, quoth the raven. Nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed by some unseen censer, swung by seraphim, whose footfall tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch! I cried. Thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he hath sent thee respite, respite and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, O oh, quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked upstarting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. No, leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken, quit the bust above my door, take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Take thy beak from out my heart, and take thy form from off my door, quoth the raven. Nevermore, nevermore, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door, and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight over him streaming throws his shadow on the floor, and my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore.